Hi guys, welcome. Um, so today we're having a second look at the machine. Um, we have it running. Um, we made a few parts here. Um, so it's, it's really up and running. We have a few, few test pieces here. And uh, we'll go through how the process is, uh, is really working, where you go from taking a digital file and uh, preparing it in the preform software before you uh, push print really and send it through USB uh, and start printing. So we're gonna make this model. Um, I have it loaded with black uh, resin right now, so I changed that uh, just to try out some different materials. Uh, so we're gonna start off with printing this, the 3D Benchy, and um, uh, after that we're gonna check out a few other uh, pieces that we, we made. So uh, stay tuned for the ride and let's go from, from, from the beginning. See ya. Okay, so we're starting off from a Fusion 360 and uh, I have the Open Railway train loaded here. Um, so I'm just clicking the 3D print button and choosing the refinement as high. Um, there's a few settings here to, to change curvatures, triangulations and etc. But just leave it on high and uh, save it as a SDL file basically. Um, so what we want to do first, just to be sure, is to open the file in NetFab Studio Basic. It's a free software where you can import um, a STL file, going to uh, Part and Add. And you can then go to the um, cross up there and uh, basically repair your model. So checking for error. Uh, you can see on the, on the right hand side that it doesn't have any shells or invalid orientations or any holes. So that's pretty good. But uh, you can you just update and do a, a simple, um, simple repair. And then you basically export the part as an SDL. Um, I usually rename them just to rep or repaired or something like that. Uh, sometimes you get this error and you can just optimize it in within uh, NetFem and then export it. It's just, just a matter of, of uh, welding triangles basically. So then we're going to the preform software and we're choosing a clear material and um, the version 2. That's, that's what I have loaded. I'm thinking, I'm not really sure if using 0.1 or 0.05 millimeters, but I'm gonna go with 0.1. So we open up just the standard model from um, from preform or from lamps. Then we open the train. Um, it's just navigating and opening it. It's not really scaled down, so we kind of have to do that first. So we're gonna enable auto shrink. Um, next up here is just to, to scale it. I think I wanna have it a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm just gonna scale it apart to a nice round number. Um, Point. Let's see here. Point one is way too small. Um, could be, we could print it this small, but I kind of want to have it in, a, in another size. Um, so I'm thinking of having the X axis in 100 millimeters, just to get a nice and round number. Um, let's see, of course, you have to have the model selected until you can scale it. Navigating through here, um, yeah. So let's do a 125 millimeters. So that's the one of the H0 sizes, I think, for these trains. Uh, what we can do is then uh, later is just orientate the model so it fits inside of the volume, as you can see here. Um, and yeah, sure, th this will take up some some um, support material, but I think that's quite okay. So we're gonna lower the the point size so we get really small um, contacts with the model. We're going to disable the internal support structure just to make sure that we don't get any models inside the windows, for example. Um, actually, I have it enabled. Um, ah, never mind. So, generating the, the support materials, I, I just remember we have an inside of the train here, so we kind of want to have the internal supports to make sure that we, uh, we get everything in order. So let's just do that, and here you can see the generated support materials. Um, it's a quite easy structure to, to remove. Um, these uh, the things here are to avoid uh, drips. So, so when the machine peels, the the resin won't drip on uh, from the model. It will try to drip from from the sides instead. Also, it's much easier to remove the model later on. 
Yeah, so uh, this created way too much support material, so I'm gonna just regenerate here to make sure we don't get um, support material on top of the model. Uh, in this case, I'm still not really happy. There, there's a few spots where I don't want to have support material. Um, so I can actually, first of all, I'm just going to orientate this a little bit better on the other side. So I make sure that the, the, the front is in nice and detailed. Also, I, I will avoid getting some of the support material on the front of the, the cabin of the train. Just bear with me here and we'll, we'll um, rearrange this. If you want, you can skip ahead uh, until around 10 minutes in and we'll have some, some finished prints. But uh, if not, just stay tuned, stay with me. <laughs> so regenerating new support materials, it's a really good feature. Um, I really like the way it generates support material. Um, in some cases, there's still a few points that I think um, why I might want to add some support material or just remove. So in this case, um, I think there's just a little bit too much uh, on the cabin. So I'm going to go into the um, edit selected. Um, so, so I can just rearrange some of the, the support material here. Just planning a few of these. You can see here it's just too many of those those parts. Yeah, so let's click here on edit selected and you can see all these blue dots. So if you click on them, um, you will remove them. So you don't have those contact features. So that, that brings, uh, it's a good way of, of uh, controlling where to put um, uh, the contact feature for a support material. So if for some reason it, it generates in really weird places, you can control it yourself. So I'm actually gonna remove um, some uh, in some weird places here and just add some on the inside here because we're not gonna use that inside. And apply the changes and uh, yeah, something like that. I think that's pretty good. So when we're happy with that and we, uh, we like the support mess, oh, there's one, um, one extra from the side there. I'm just gonna remove that quickly. I don't think that's really a necessary spot for it. The next step is just to lay out the model and put it closer to the, the peel so you get uh, you, the, the engine doesn't have to work. There, there's a stepper motor moving the build plates and angling it up and down to remove air bubbles and, and things like that. So um, when you do the layout, it tries to move it close to that. So then we're just gonna print this. Um, well, basically, um, in this case, I have another computer uh, connected to the printer. So what we'll do is just to uh, save the file and load it from the other one. And then you just click print. And you verify that you have a clear build plate and, and clear build um, resin tank. So from that, let's go printing. So you can see the machine in, in, in progress. So the, the orange resin tank with the clear liquid, liquid um, model. And here you can see the peel process. So on the right side, it moves down and, uh, and, and peels before next layer. Um, you can see here the peel process uh, just moving on and on. You can see here the 950 layers. It's going quite quick here. Of course, it's a time lapse. Um, and you can see us working in the background, just moving around. Um, so it's, it's, it's really cool to see this part grow up. It's uh, a really simple procedure. Um, this uh, peeling feature now that you can see, it's just uh, synchronizing with the, time, with the frame rate of the um, time lapse. That's why it looks so slowly. So when it kind of speeds up now, it's more, more real. Um, so let's go with, um, with the post-processing. So we remove the build plate, and here you can see the model. Um, 
it's just been removed from the build uh, from the machine and we'll um, remove the, the uh, print from the build plate. Uh, so usually we use a, a clipper or something like that to remove it. Um, you have to kind of have to bend it up. You have to be a little bit careful with the build plate, of course. Something like that. You can see now it's time to rinse the model. Um, so you put it down in isopropanol. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong with the chemical name there in, in English. Um, but so you want to rinse the model for around two minutes. So you kind of want to move it around to make sure that you clear any unhardened resin. So that's the goal here to remove unhardened resin by basically um, washing it off. So you want to do that for two minutes and then you want to leave it in for um, usually around another 10 minutes. Usually it's, it's pretty well, pretty good. Um, so you just leave it with the lid closed um, so you can still breathe in the same room. Just leave, leave it there. Um, if you want you can put your model close to a window or use a um, UV oven later on to, to make it even harder. Um, but of course you want to get start printing, so let's just clean the build plate and then you can put it on. You, we just clean with normal paper. If we're changing the resin, we usually do something else. We, we kind of clean it with uh, isopropanol and etc. So after 10 minutes, it's time to cut away the support material. Uh, in this case, we actually just want to do it with um, uh, using the, our hands. So we kind of want to show you how easy it can be and how hard a model is. Usually you should use a, um, a clipper or something. And you also want to dry the model, let it dry a little bit more than we do. We, we don't really get all the drops off. But we're using a, a new, just a newspaper to, to put the model on and it will uh, absorb some of the isopropanol. So now it's time to remove the support material. Uh, as I mentioned, we are using our hands, which isn't the best, but it works. Um, the connections are, are pretty easy to remove, especially with the clipper or knife. It's it's really, really simple. Uh, and the support material is actually quite strong, so sometimes you can just pull it off um, using uh, other parts of the, of the support structure. So, let's have a look at the prints. Um, so this is the model um, finished. It's quite difficult to see here. You make sure you have HD on so you can really see the details. Um, but it's amazing. You can see almost everything. It's just really, really beautiful. Uh, using the transparent plastic as well uh, gives us some really cool features. So let's try to have here some, some uh, macro looks at it. I think it looks really, really cool all with all the vents and everything. And you can see the grids and the lights and the horns on top of the cabin and even the handles on the doors. And remember, this is a 125 millimeter long model. It's really, really small. Um, so if you look here on the roof of the cabin, you can actually see the, the horns and they weren't they. And that's, by the way, millimeters on, on, the, on the taper there. It's really difficult to focus on uh, using a macro. Look at the grids there on the front panel. It's it's crazy how much details you can Okay, get. guys. Um, I hope you enjoy that step through guide from from beginning to printing. Um, here I have a few samples. This is just for fun. Uh, we made a, a turbine wheel, really, um, which isn't really that nice, but it works on this old RC uh, motor that I had. And it actually works pretty well, uh, as you can see in the clipper. It actually produces a little bit of thrust, but not that much. It was just a um, a test to see if it's really that um, uh, reliable and it's really modeled precisely in here um, to really fit this really really well and, and it did. We also have here the open RC um, locomotive, um, scaled down of course as you can see here in the clip. Um, it's really really cool, especially I like this in transparency because you can see so much of the model. Um, there's another uh, few models here. Um, Bruce Lee, I think it is, in really small formats. Um, of course, the three benches and some smaller benches as well. So you can really see the, the scale size here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it, it's a lot of fun making it. Um, if there's anything else you would like me to go through with this machine, just drop a uh, question in the comments. 
Um, I have a few other clips here on a really affordable printers, the Flashwatch Dreamer. So you should see it, I think, up here um, if you want to check it out. Thank you. Um, please like the video, subscribe if you enjoyed the 3D printing videos, and uh, see you soon. Bye.